Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's official study manual 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2021 edition and always make sure the book is in front of you when you and I are going working together. Today we'll continue where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we were on page number 169 and we're doing some practice problems. There are five practice problems on that page you will see as you turn, the, turn, turn to page 169. We did the first four. Let's do the last one right now. Number five. If, if at the end of the video you decide that you decide that this was helpful to you and that you would like to work with me you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kishwaniprep at icloud.com it says which of the following which, which of the following equation which equation which of the following equation is directly proportional Which of the following is directly proportional? We talked about that concept yesterday, we came across it yesterday, and what we learned yesterday is that when we say that two variables are directly proportional to each other, what that means is that each time, each time x goes up by, by each time x, x goes, each time x goes up by one unit y goes up or down by a fixed proportion by a fixed proportion in other words it goes up y goes up by each time x goes up y goes up by two times the x or three times the x or ten times the x or negative three times the x or maybe three three fifths of the x it's a constant figure that proportionality const that 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 amount by which the, the that multiple rather by which the x y goes up each time when x goes up by one unit that multiple is called proportionality constant and the reason it's called proportionality constant is because it's always constant do you understand Let's take a look at the answer choice here. A says y is equal to x minus 5. That is not a that's not a proportional equation because here you will, had it been had it been simply like this, had it been simply like this, that would have been a proportional equation. It says which equation is directly proportional? That would have been because here the proportionality constant is 1. There you go, you see? Y always goes up by 1 times x. X goes up by 1 unit y is going to go up by 1 unit, x goes up by 10 units, it's going to go, y is going to go up by 10 times, 10 times 1, it's proportionally constant here is 1, but here, in addition to that, we have negative 5, which disqualifies it, you cannot go around adding or subtracting anything to it, it's just certain multiple of x, y always goes up by a fixed multiple of x, so it's right there, each time x goes, goes up by 1 unit, y goes up or down by a fixed proportion, fixed constant, by a fixed constant and nothing else, nothing more, nothing else, no, nothing more, nothing less. So this one would not do the job because it has minus 5 in it. Let's so answer choice B. B says y is equal, is equal to 3 again by itself it would have been fine because proportionality constant here is 3 but it is not by itself it has minus 5 next to it which disqualifies it, which disqualifies it. D says y is equal to 5. y is equal to 5. That doesn't even have x in it. It doesn't even have x in it. We came across similar situation yesterday also. That's not good. The correct answer here is the correct answer here is C. This is y is equal to 3x. Now if you were to add if you were to add something to it, let's say 3x minus 7 then this would have been wrong. But it's not 3x minus 7, it's just 3x. 
just 3x would do just fine. The proportional constant here is 3, which means y always goes up by 3 times the x. 3 times the amount, amount of x. Whatever x is, you, you tell me the value of x, I'll just multiply by 3 and give you the value of y. Always, always, always. I don't have to wonder about it. I don't have to think about it. If I know the value of x, just multiply by 3, you will have the y. And that's called proportionality. The x and y variables are proportional. That was the end of it. That was problem number 6. As you can see there on that page, that was problem number 5 and that was the end of that page. There are no other problems there. 5 is all they give you. So we're going to do two more. You and I are going to do two more problems. Problem number 6 and 7. Two problems that appeared in the old edition of T's. Long time ago. T's 5. T's 5 was, was published in 2012. I have solved every single problem that appeared in this book. You'll find a solution to all of the problems on my channel in the event that you're interested in getting some more practice. Just go to my channel or just go to YouTube or you are on YouTube. Just search for Keshwani. Just type in my, always type in my name otherwise you're going to get a thousand different hits. Just type in Keshwani. T is 5, day 1. And there you'll find a series of 80 videos where you'll find a solution to, as I said, all the problems that appeared in T5 in 2012. Today we'll do a couple of them dealing with the notion of proportionality. So what I want you to do here, because the problem because the problem is not in front of you, what I want you to do is, as soon as I finish writing the problem on the blackboard, I'll give you a couple of seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. And what I want you to do is, pause the video and solve the problem yourself first. Do it yourself first and then do it with me. You and I will do it together and you will find that you will get more out of it that way. So here's number six. It says that, it says that apparently we are assembling some parts and we are told that we can put together 1250 parts take 50 minutes to assemble we are working on assembly line and that's our rate we can put together 1250 parts in 50 minutes the question is how many how many minutes will it take to assemble 1550 parts again as I said I'll give you a couple of seconds so that you can pause and unpause the video do it yourself first here we go so the reason this topic is called proportion, this topic is called proportions for a reason, that's what I meant to say. This chapter is called proportion for a reason, because these are proportion problems. And therefore we're going to set it up as a proportion. What else? Set it up as a proportion. Now when you're setting it as a proportion, it doesn't matter which one you put on the top and which one you put on the bottom, as long as you're consistent. And I usually like to do it, I usually I like to put the t on the top whatever appears first. It's just my habit, it keeps it straight, it keeps it simple, it keeps it organized. So here are my parts, and here are the minutes. And you simply set it up. 1250 parts we know. Take 50 minutes. Continue under equal sign, and then question is, we want to assemble 1550 parts. The question is, how long will it take? That's your unknown. And when you finish solving that unknown, because it appears on the top, or because it appears on the bottom, that unknown, whatever quantity it turns out to be, will have a unit of what you see here at the bottom, minutes. On the top we have the parts, on the bottom we have the minutes. Let's find out, shall we? Let's do it on the top. So let's cross multiply. If you cross multiply, I'm not going to do every step. You, if you bring the x on the top, I don't know how much of a babysitting you need to require, but uh, 
this first pass multiply this thing. So 1250 times x, 1250 times x would equal 1250 times x would equal 50 times 1550. Again, we're not interested in all this bumbo jumbo. We want to find out what x is. So x by itself, x by itself will simply be 50 times 1550 divided by that guy, 1250. Do you understand? Let's do it together, sure. Right. Should we begin? Let's begin. Let's divide top and bottom by 10. If you divide top and bottom by 10, this zero will drop out and this zero will drop out. The reason I did not cross out this zero, you cannot cross out this and that, you can only cross out one. The reason I did not choose to work with that one, there is a reason for it, which you will see in one second. So that zeros are gone. And then after that, you're, I hope that you are able to see that 125 is a multiple of 25. 125 is a multiple of 25. If it makes it easier, think of it in terms of money. If I have a dollar 25, I have five quarters. If I have five quarters, that's dollar 25. It's a multiple of 25. Let's divide top and bottom by 25. We know 50 is a multiple of 25. If you divide 50 by 25, we get 2. If you divide 125 by 25, we get 5. And now, let's change the color one more time. Here we have 155, here we have 5. They are both multiples of 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. If you divide the bottom by 5, it's going to go away. 15 has 3 fives, and 5 has 1 five. Voila, there you go. The answer is x is equal to x is equal to 2 times 31, which happens to be 62. It will take 62 minutes. It will take 62 minutes to assemble 1,550 parts. That's all. Let's do one more. I did not I did not make up any numbers here in this problem to make it easier or difficult than it was. The problem that we just solved is the exact problem that appeared in this book, verbatim. You understand? Do we know what verbatim means? Verbatim means word for word. Word for word. Number seven. We are told that he can travel one hundred and thirty miles in two hours. In two hours. How far can we go? In five hours. Let's find out, shall we? It's a proportion problem, obviously. It's a proportion problem. Since since I brought this up, I have to finish it, otherwise it's going to keep bothering me, it will keep nagging me, because I know we learned this word verbatim in our vocabulary lessons, and if you were unaware of such a thing, there is such a thing as a vocabulary lessons for T's on my channel. And I'll give you the information in a second, verbatim, let's see. Well, there we go, day number 73. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, and I see no reason why you shouldn't be, to search for, just again as always, type in my name first, Keshwani, T is vocabulary words, that's what you want to put in, T is vocabulary words, with my name, and then day 73, and you will learn the word verbatim. In 71, we learned the word mor morbid, which I used a couple of days ago, when my marker was about to die, and I said this marker is morbid, it is about to die, it is about to kick the bucket. When someone tells you that I'm about to meet the Lord, the person is morbid. Don't tell them that. Do you understand? Let's do. Let's start up with the proportion. So here we have miles first, miles and hours. Miles on the top, hours at the bottom, and we are told that we can go 130 miles in two hours. Another equal sign. And we want to know how far can we go in five hours. Pay attention. This is this five hours is going to appear on the bottom. Those hours are at the bottom. Pay attention. 
Because if you end up putting it on top, then whatever silly answer that you're going to get here, that's going to be one of the answer choices. That's it. Let's solve for x. Bring the 5 to that side. We don't need this anymore. We don't need this part anymore. Let's just multiply both sides by 5. Multiply both sides by 5. 5 is going to disappear. And we're going to have the x by itself. We just have to work on this thing. So let's do it together, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 2. We divide top and bottom by 2. 13 has... 12 has 6 2's, 6 2's are 12, after we take away 12 from the 13 we have a remainder of 1, 1 goes and joins a 0 and becomes a 10, and 10 has 5 2's, so x is simply 65 times 5, x is simply 65 times 5, that's all, let's find out shall we, 60 times 5 is 300, and 5 times 5 is 25, it's 325 miles is what we can expect to go in 5 hours at this rate, do you understand? Now, I hope that you also realize that we went in, we went about, when we went at this, uh, we went at this uh, question, I think that's how you say it, in a very roundabout way. There is a straightforward way. We didn't have to do all of this mumbo jumbo. Here's the straightforward way. We didn't have to do any of this mumbo jumbo. It's a straightforward look. They tell you that we're going 130 miles in two hours. If in two hours, if in two hours we're going 130 miles, it makes common sense that in one hour I should go half the distance. Half of one, half of 100 is 50, half of 30 is 15, 50 plus 15 is 65. Which is what, this, which is what we got 65 here. So in one hour we can go 65. And therefore in five hours we will go five times the amount, right there. 65 times five, which is what we just did here. That was number seven. That was number seven. We'll do a couple more. We'll do a couple more problems tomorrow, again out of the same book, when we meet tomorrow, okay? If you wish to get hold of me, send me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Alright, bye now.